The top 10 most expensive art pieces this year, it was a crazy $781 million. Let's find out who those artists are and what pieces made the list. But first, let's acknowledge how insane this is. And after this video, do me a favor and send yourself down a rabbit hole trying to figure out why. Why do people spend this much money on one piece? Is it for love? Is it for taxes? We can get back into that later. Anyway, this is our news of Mariah. Let's get to it. Let's start from bottom to top. Coming in at number 10 is Cy Twombly's Untitled, which was executed in 2007 and sold for $58.9 million. Let me repeat, this is number 10. Just imagine what the rest of the list is gonna look like and imagine better yet, that they expected this piece to sell for more. The highest estimate on this piece was 60 million. Now a treat would have been to see it surpass that, but it landed right in the middle of the estimate of low of 40 million and the high of 60. Number nine is Jackson Pollock's untitled number 17. It was executed in 1951 and it sold for 61.2 million. Now, because of the rarity here, it went past its high estimate by a great amount. It was estimated to sell between a low of 25 million and just a high of 35 million. So 61 million raised a lot of praises. Up next, we have a very, very special one. He is the only artist on this list who sold an NFT. And on top of that, the only artist that actually seen any monetary return from those high selling pieces. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. Number eight, coming in, we have Beeple's Every Day, the first 5,000 days, which was made in 2021, this year, and sold for 69 point three million dollars now this one was unprecedented no one could possibly know the outcome of this one it was completely new to the market but it did not disappoint making headlines literally everywhere next we have number seven claude monet's a painting from his series water lilies it was made in 1919 and it sold for 70.4 million that was no surprise there coming in at number six is a Vincent Van Gogh piece. I'm personally not gonna try to butcher the name here with my Texas accent, but you guys can take a stab at it. It was executed in 1889 and it sold for $71.4 million. At number five, we have Alberto Giacometti's Lanez. It was cast in 1965 and it sold for $78.4 million. This piece was sold from one of the most fascinating single owner collections of the year from the Maclow's collection. And it was purchased by Justin Sun. If you guys have been keeping up with the art news, you should know who Justin Sun is. He's the crypto entrepreneur that everyone is talking about in the art world. He's also planning to show his entire collection in the metaverse. If you wanna learn more about that, click the card above. Now coming in at number four is Mark Rothko's number seven, which was executed in 1951 and sold for 82 Point five million dollars. Although this piece was estimated to sell for up to 90 million, it would have been amazing for that to happen for those who were watching and more so for the Maclows. Or now that I think about it, maybe not for the Maclows because the only reason they were selling this collection was because they're going through or they were going through a divorce. I'm pretty sure they were not happy to get rid of their entire collection. We're gonna talk about that more in another video. Number three is Sandro Botticelli's Portrait of a Young Man Holding a Roundel, which sold for 92.2 million. This piece in itself had two options. It was either not expected to perform at all or expected to perform up to 200 million. Now, especially artists, I want you to listen to the language that I'm using and the language that the auction houses use. Using words like perform, it lets us know that the work has become separate from the artist in many cases, taking on a life of its own, really becoming a performer piece. Now I wanted to note that because it's very interesting. Let me know what you think about that in the comments. Now we're to the final two with number two being none other than Jean-Michel Basquiat selling in this case his second most expensive auction result to date of 93.1 million. And finally for number one a name you know whether you're familiar with art or not Pablo Picasso selling his piece for 103.4 million. The bids were coming through until the end. Then there were two main bidders driving the price and battling for the win. They went up just $1 million increments at a time, from 60 million to 90 million, trying each other's hands and bidding by phone. It was crazy. Now keep in good mind that these numbers include the auction house premium, which were the fees that auction houses charged to sell the work. 
For instance, the Pablo Picasso hammered at 90 million, but at the end of the day, it sold for 103.4 million because of the premiums. Needless to say, these auction houses are making a lot of money. Let's end by recognizing that there are no women on this list. Let's also recognize that only one artist saw a direct monetary return, and this artist used the technology of the non-fungible token. That's all I have for you guys today. Don't forget to press that like button and subscribe if you buy. Until next time.